was very popular among the Marxists and the socialists. <laughs> I, uh, many people, they don't attach these labels to themselves, uh, but... but uh, That's because they don't want anybody to know what they're doing. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that, that's uh, uh, probably true. But whatever label you attach to it, I think it is... It is uh, we're talking about social philosophies, whatever label you attach to them, you could you could call them Marxist or whatever, but they are uh, social philosophies that emphasize working hard uh, simply to exploit and dominate uh, matter. Uh, they want to keep this separation between uh, church and state, which I think our founding fathers really didn't intend. I think they intended for what they intended was to keep the government illuminated and, 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 and inspired by uh, godly sentiments. I think they really intended that. I think uh, from my writing, from my reading of, of their writing, what they intended was that there be no state-approved or state religion, uh, and and that that was that was the only religion which they have actually got now. That's what the Darwinists actually have. They've got right. the state to approve of their religion. Religion. <laughs> You're right. Exactly uh, the opposite of what the, the founders intended. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got that's. I think that uh, the, the uh, federal government's mandate by law that nothing else can be taught in the school systems other than this Darwinian uh, theory of evolution amounts to an establishment of religion. Yeah, state religion. And, and they're funded, the priests of this religion are funded by our tax money. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you've got professors and teachers at uh, schools and colleges who are being given uh, uh, you know, salaries of fifty to $100,000 a year uh, to make this propaganda, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, to say these things. Uh, we have to pay for this propaganda, this uh, materialistic and basically atheistic propaganda that's coming from these people. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're being forced to pay our tax money to support these people, and I think that that's wrong. I'm curious, Michael, when you first started this uh, journey, when you were reading the ancient uh, texts and of, of, of the different uh, um, uh, countries yeah. and people. Yeah, that started in the, back in the early 1970s when yeah. I was, uh, of course, I'm 50 years old now. And walk, I, walk, welcome to the club. I'm 24, <laughs> 25, yeah. you know, starting seriously looking into these matters. Were, were you... Uh, trying to look for some validation for your religious beliefs when you did that? Uh, well, initially I was just interested in seeing what these writings had to say. Now, uh, I would say, yes, I mean, I've, you know, in the introductions to my books, you know, I always mention that I, I do come from a, a particular standpoint. I, I, I do have uh, some faith in God, and I've gotten that faith of, uh, uh, well, from many sources, but the, the source that I've been pursuing, you know, for the past, you know, 25 years or so, I found a lot of inspiration in uh, some of these uh, ancient writings from India. I've, I've always been very much inspired by them, and I visited that country uh, several times, and I'm, I'm very inspired by that. And I, I do admit that that's a source of my ideas and the inspiration behind uh, a lot of the work that I do. Now, now in my books uh, that I've published. Uh, thus far, like Forbidden Archaeology, and in the, the text of those books, I really don't get into my ideas, because what I simply have tried to do is I admit, well, I had some inspiration to, to start digging for these facts, uh, but in my books, I just put the facts out there, and I am quite happy to have anybody look at those facts and interpret them as they will, and a, a lot of people from a lot of different perspectives have made use of the information that I've provided, for example, there are Christian creationist scientists who very much like the work that I've done, uh, even though I'm coming at it from a different angle, religiously speaking, and I might disagree with them about the age of the Earth. Many of them mm -hmm. uh, prefer a very short age for the Earth, and I don't have a problem with a very long age for the Earth. But uh, they said, for example, there's the Christian uh, Research Society Quarterly, which is the main scientific publication of the Christian creationist uh, scientists, and they've said uh, they've written a, a very nice review of uh, my book, where they say, "Yes, this is uh, this is this should be required reading for anybody who's interested in this subject." And they say, "Well, we disagree with the author as far as his uh, religious ideas go, but as far as the evidence that he's presented, it goes against the Darwinian theory of evolution." 
Revolution, and uh, we find it uh, quite an important book in that, that respect. And then I've also had uh, Islamic scientists uh, say that they appreciate the evidence because it goes along with some of their ideas, because they say in the Quran there are descriptions of uh, generations of humans existing before you know, Adam and Eve. You know, uh, so, that, so they found it interesting. Uh, people who are involved in UFO research uh, who believe that the Earth has been uh, visited by you know, extraterrestrials in ancient times, well, they, they look at the, the, the work and they find it uh, valuable for their purposes. And uh, you, know, you go across the intellectual spectrum. 